Friends, today we're going to take some images to make a sweet neon sign. So let's get cracking. All right, friends, so check this out. We have cut in the grooves and the letters so we can take our parts and simply snap them into place. Of course, you could add glue if you wanted them to be permanent, but you don't have to. If we had those a little bit deeper, they would even snap in firmer. And with my letters in place, now we can add the EL filament. Notice it turns blue or blinks when we put it in. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of hot glue right down in this corner. And just continue that process all the way around our design. And wrap up by pulling it back down through that hole. Snip off the excess. Of course, making sure I keep the end that's connected to the box. This was a cable organizer that keeps that a little bit covered. And check it out, friends. Hit the power button. Wicked cool neon lion sign. How cool is that? Of course, one more click and it's blinking fast another and it's blinking slow all right so here are the build steps first things we need is the lion's logo text i'm going to simply visit right here and i am going to use my screen capture tool i've got a shortcut so i can simply click and grab it just like that i'm going to simply erase with snag it and then i'm going to change the canvas color to match the project and tell it okay when I click finish, it automatically exports it to my Dropbox so it's ready for the next step. With that image created, we need to turn it into an SVG. I like to do that with PIC SVG. Let's do upload a picture. Here is my Lions logo text, and we can simply open it. We do not want the edges. Instead, we want the one we get with internal one or internal two. Notice this is filled, and we can simply hit download SVG. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder and save it as Lion's logo text and hit save. At this point, to get this text, we simply need to choose import, choose a file, of course, find my downloads, and there is that SVG that we just created. When we import it, we need to choose art, and then I'm going to scale it down instead of 300 millimeters. I'm going to type 120. Notice they both scale after I press enter and choose import. Bingo, our file is in. You'll notice that I wanted it to be a little taller, so all I did was stretch it to the size I wanted. Now here's how we make all these parts. This SVG comes with a fill mode. Under default, it looks like that. Silhouette, it looks like this. Notice the O is gone. We've also got outer line and inner line. Let me show you how we use these pieces to create this one right here. I'm gonna click on this and ungroup it. The first thing you'll see are all of the holes. So I made a copy of this as a hole. I made a copy of this as a hole, and we cut those out. I'm gonna select those with shift select, and I'm gonna shift nudge them out of the way so I can put them back later. Now I'm gonna take this part. Notice it has an outer line, and it has a silhouette. That is all I did here was I took this and did control D. If we nudge it over, switch it to outer line. I changed the number to four and press enter. I changed the corners to round and I maximized the quality. After a moment, you'll see that this outer line shows up just like that one was right there. Because I wanted it to be the back, I changed its thickness to two. And then I took that part, I'm gonna move it down a little bit. And then I took that part and did control D and I made the next one, the silhouette. Bingo, those pieces are filled in. I then took these two and I used them to create this sweet line out here. We are gonna take these and we're gonna group them, control G, and then we're gonna export that as an SVG. You can safely ignore these lines. They do not affect our project at all. I'm going to call this Lions Logo Text. And I'm going to put large. Then we are going to turn around and import that same file we just created. And I'll show you why. Once again, we choose Art. This time I keep the measurements and choose Import. Do note, it does take a moment. All right, so here it is. And all those lines look annoying, but check this out. If we switch to Outer Line, it gives us that exact outer line that we want. Once again, I'm gonna switch it to round. 
and bump up the quality, but this time I'm gonna make the line width one and press enter. I can now take these two and we have just created the outside of our suite design. You can see here I set it to five, so right here I'm gonna set it to five as well. These are just things you can adjust as you create. So we have just made the back of our design. Now let me show you how to make this part right here. It is almost unfairly easy. We just simply grab that same shape, do control D. I'm gonna do shift nudge to move it over and we switch to inner line. I'm gonna tell you the number I chose for mine was two. Of course, you can fiddle with this. What I liked about this number is the gap between my outside wall and this ends up being just right for that EL filament. If we move this over, you can see it is an exact match. Just for fun, I made that one a gray, just so it looks a little more lions-like. So let me show you how to get it ready for 3D printing. First, Control D, set the next one as a hole, and let's move the hole over. I'm gonna do Shift Nudge so it's easier to select. Right now the work plane is all the way down, so I'm gonna hit D to drop and set that on the bottom. But then I wanna raise it up one millimeter, so I'm gonna do Control Up. So now it will not cut all the way through. You can see it's not setting on the bottom. I'm gonna select this part as well and do Control D, Shift Nudge it, set it to a hole. It already is sitting down on the bottom. We can double check like that. So I'm gonna do Control Up as well. Now I can grab all these parts, do L for a line. I'll make the black one the boss and we want it to be centered and centered. This makes it so that it is going to cut in if I were making this again, instead of having the black be two, I think I would change it to three, just so they click in a little further. Type three to make that so it sets up just like that. Now I can grab all these parts and do control G to group. Note it does take a moment. Now we've got that base where eventually the letters and this ring will snap in. Then the filament will go around the outside edge. I'm going to quickly delete all my extras just so it stays clean and get them back lined up so I can show you how they go to the 3D printer. Let's export it for 3D printing. First, selected shape. I only want the letters STL, selected shape, STL. I always save mine in my 3D modeling folder. This will be the sign text. This one will be exported as sign base. And finally, export, still selected shape, STL. And I'm going to call this one sign ring. Friends, it's off to Bamboo Studio, and let's load our parts. Of course, we are loading them separately this time. Here comes the text, the base, and the ring. I'm going to do Control-A to grab them all, and let's auto-arrange. I'm going to right-click and set the colors. I want this to be my Anycubic Black. We're going to click on this one and we're going to change it to the awesome silk blue. And I want this one to be the sweet high speed blue that I've got from Epax. Now I want this to print quicker, so we're going to do another awesome setting. I'm going to go out here to Others, and instead of printing by layer, I want to print by object. This, of course, speeds it up because it'll print the entire piece and then swap colors. But notice all three do not fit at the same time. So I'm just going to delete this one, space this one out a little bit, and print these two, and then print the final one. By doing that, we also eliminate the prime tower. So now we can simply slice the plate and print the plate, double checking that our colors are what we wanted. I do not want a time lapse, and I'm going to simply send it to the 3D printer. Of course, it switches to the device menu, and once it finishes downloading, we can click play and monitor everything from afar. Friends, there you have it, a sweet neon sign created with a image and Tinkercad. Friends, as I wrap up, don't forget the assembly is at the beginning of the video this time. Friends, I do want to send a quick shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Absolutely love how that community is getting larger and larger. There will be a link in the description.
Of course, I also want to say thanks for all the times you click, like, share the video, and of course, leave a comment. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.